And just to give you an example, uh, the month before we had an incident with that same homeless individual for assault and some ambulance drivers over on Devonshire Street on Boston side. So again, it's a person that's at least just out patrolling on his sector. He knows who should be there, who shouldn't be there, and, and doing his job and getting somebody who's a problem off the streets of, of the North End. On March 23rd, at 6 a.m. at uh, Cleveland Street in Snow Hill, the uh, rapid response, the Alpha 102, which is the rapid response car from the North End, they responded to a call for a man uh, climbing on the fire escape on Cleveland Place. They went up, they stopped this individual. He wound up having a warrant out of Denham District Court for drugs. He was a fugitive from uh, justice warrants. He was placed under arrest. He was a uh, 38-year-old out of uh, Malden, that individual. The other arrest we had was 269 Commercial Street at the parking lot on March 23rd at 12.45 a.m. Uh, again, officers Flores and McManus, which is the 102 car, which is the rapid response car for the North End, responded for a call for vandalism in progress. They found an individual with blood on his hands and the parking gate was torn down. It turns out this individual had been involved in some kind of a disturbance in front of the parking lot and tore the gates off. It says he had no reason. He was placed under arrest for uh, destruction of the property. And the last arrest, uh, again, Officer Cullinane, March 24th, observed a vehicle double parked to Fort Hanover Street, backing up traffic. This individual was found to have a suspended driver's license, and Officer Cullinane uh, placed this individual under arrest for operating with a suspended driver's license. So, that's the overall uh, crime. And Tommy, are we going to do the reports tonight for us? We'll do the general reports. Okay. Um, again, of course, we didn't have any homicides. We had zero aggravated assaults. We had no sexual assaults to report. We did have one robbery under investigation from 18 Wiggett Street. Um, this information received that somebody had been beaten up. Uh, it was very early in the morning. And, uh, the call came in at 5.03. The victim had been down at the hospital. He said that he had uh, some headphones on. Uh, two gentlemen pulled up in a vehicle and said, hey, give me those headphones. He had a confrontation with them, and uh, he got beat up and ended up at the hospital. Uh, he only had a uh, description of a charcoal uh, gray wool coat uh, of one of the people, and they were driving. A tan SUV. And um, they just had uh, two black males, uh, nothing further on the description. And the victim is. Uh, just the assault. The detectives went up to the hospital, interviewed him afterwards, and then he explained about how he was uh, confronted by these two individuals in the, in the car who demanded his uh, hit folks that he had on. Uh, the detectives are following up and he didn't have a lot of information uh, since then, you know, in terms of any more description or anything else like that. What time did you Five in the morning. Oh, three, in, three in the morning. It was 338 a.m. Yeah. We'll see it. Yeah, 338 a.m. Which street was it? Wiggins. Wiggins. Yeah, 338 a.m. Were you familiar with that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, did you call it in there? Yeah, we'll say, is the kid all right? You know, he was hurt pretty bad. He, uh, he was released from the hospital. It doesn't say much on, you know, on, on his condition. But on that day at 2.15, Detective Boyle met with him. Yeah, so he was released that, that same that day. day. Yeah, Detective right. Boyle met with him, uh, did the follow-up. And that's where you get the further information about the fact that it was a, a robbery. Right. Yeah. 
I don't think the guy had that much information due to the initial uh, call and stuff. But, uh, what, what did you hear? Did you hear just a disturbing self front of? No, no. no. I, I, yeah. I told the detective that they definitely had his headphones on and just got whacked. He, there was no yelling, nothing. Yeah. And like I said, the kid was very hurt. Yeah. A lot of blood. Unusual in the sense that we don't have a lot of street robberies like this in a robbery. Um, no, no. Well, it wasn't just a boss fight. Yeah, it was definitely a robbery. They didn't pull a weapon, did you jump them? I didn't get out of the car, it was just a black dog. That's way black dog. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about it. It has it as an unarmed robbery, so it doesn't say anything about a, a weapon. Uh, he was. Uh, he so was at a friend's house and went out to smoke a cigarette. Really? Yeah. yeah. And you just didn't see it, uh, whatever, you just didn't see it coming. Yeah. yeah. It looked pretty odd. I mean, it looked like they hit him right yeah. on the side. So, and certainly, if anyone has any more information, I mean, I, I that time of morning was tough. It was 3 something, you know, whatever AM it was, but uh, we'd appreciate it if you contact Detective Boyle, who's detected this fall on one uh, mm -hmm. case.
Uh, it's a low number, which is good for the neighborhood. One on Atlantic Avenue, one on Clinton Street. Clinton Street Garage is sort of, we'd like to think sort of out of the reporting area, the North End, but, you know, Fenual Hall and over as far as um, Beverly Street, uh, we do pick up those numbers for the North End. Uh, and for the last things, we had a last thing in 25 Parmenta, 65 Charter, and 179 Commercial. The 25 Parmenta was at the library. Uh, the unknown person uh, took the American flag from the pole. Um, on the 65 Charter Street, a gentleman had a package with some medication in it. Apparently, it was taken from the hallway. Um, and that went back to a Northampton, Massachusetts uh, location where it was mailed from. And on the third one, 179 Commercial Street, there was a female who had a grocery bag, put it down, went to pick it back up and realized her wallet was taken. And she believes by an unknown male, and she just said wearing a hoodie. No further description, no age. On the brakes, we did have seven brakes. The first one, 210 Endicott Street, a uh, group of girls, uh, they went on uh, vacation, spring break. Uh, they came back and discovered $140 in cash, digital camera, three chargers, three laptop computers taken. That was on 310 from 443 Hanover Street, and uh, it was put down at 3 a.m. But it says there was no sign of forced entry, and they had a dead bolt on the front door, and all the windows were locked. So that kind of says to me, and I would say this at the orientations, I'm not saying it happened here, but, you know, four kids are in the apartment. They're all getting ready to go to school, one kid, you know. Eating in the kitchen, the cereal, you know, one guy's watching, I don't know, Beavis and Butthead, another kid's in the back taking a shower, they all bomb off the door for school, and they're all relying on the last person to make sure they lock the door with the deadbolt and lock the windows. So this is under investigation, but, you know, it doesn't bode well when you say, okay, well, there was no forced entry, and we do have a deadbolt, yet there's no damage to, you know, any part of the door. And, you know, that we kind of watch out for that, that's one of the big things we do mention in the orientation and target hardening the property. The next one was 149 Endicott Street on March 22nd. Unknown persons entered the premise through the front door, which does not lock properly. This was sort of on the outer door, so it wasn't in the apartment itself. It was in the foyer area, but the outside door was locked. Whoever did come in took a second floor uh, fire extinguisher and decided to spray it all over the house. The owner of the property, um, who owns a few properties in the area, was notified and the tenants did complain that the front door entry was not properly locking. So, but apparently they didn't notify the owner prior to that. But, um, okay, on the Wigan Street one, I think the captain mentioned it a little bit. We had breaks at 5, 7, and 13. Um, we have a gentleman who's under arrest uh, and is uh, at, a, at another address, uh, another part of town, had a storage uh, facility where he had a lot of stolen goods. And I believe some of the property from Seven Wigan was recovered at that location. And uh, just, I mean, for the little back, and not too much background, but the, uh, the uh, person does have a criminal history uh, all over the state. So, anyways, uh, that is under investigation. No, he's, he's, he's going to be charged. Uh, What's that? I heard he's something. The stuff was found in the Southie? Yeah, it was, he was arrested in uh, Southie. Because, I, you know... He was arrested in Southie. I get... Yeah, sort of, yeah, but it wasn't... Okay. Um, That's just what I know. Yeah, he, he's, he's going to be charged with it. He had the stuff and on it. I heard they found her stuff, with her name on it, and the towel by my sister. Yeah, yeah. Bring it back to Woody Street. Yeah, he did have the property and from there. That's a lot of breakings on there. I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's a lot. We believe that, he, you know, we have the person that did those, but... Yeah. Uh, that's a lot, certainly, for uh, the one straight. I think in general, in Boston, I mean, I was on vacation a couple of weeks ago, and I just, my name is Gina, I just got home, and I want to really get involved in the community. I want to race here, and, um, you know, I hear a lot of, I heard a lot of stuff, but I came home with that. It's really disturbing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, like, I recommend that maybe a flyer should be put out to everybody who lives in the North End or a brochure or something, saying how to keep themselves safe. I mean, we have elderly, we have families here, um, all the pages, you know, people that work here. I think once a year, especially during the spring and the summer's coming up, a lot more people are going to be in Boston. I think there should be a flyer to protect, you know, don't answer the door, don't anybody in your door, you know, your buzzer, you know who it is, 
Y'all just be aware of who they're going up the elevator with. How to protect yourself as a woman. You know, if somebody comes behind you to rape you or to rob you. I don't see that type of, um, it, no, I think it's just, this should be a virtual assent up once a year. Everybody we actually go to the elderly buildings myself and Bobby Longo. We go into all the elderly buildings. All the elderly people usually come in and we get, we probably get close to 100 in all of them. Okay. And we, we talk to them, we go, we do like a two hour presentation. That's great. Uh, I'm just trying to learn put the safety tips in the paper before for us. Yeah. And we've also held the, uh, we call it the rat class. It's a prevention class that we have. And we've held that also. Okay. Uh, the last one is next up. University is that his partners with this in depth when we have it, but when we have it again, we'll certainly make sure we get the uh, word out. Maybe one can be done down here I mean, so that we don't have to go to Suffolk where if you put a rack class, well, yeah, there, there was one done anywhere a couple of years ago. There was one down here, yeah, there was, um, okay. yeah, but there was a couple of well, these guys know, yes, yeah, so the sexual assault. There was some sexual assault. I'm in new, the area. so oh, yeah. the, you know, I'm not a new community. I'm new to what I want to hear. Yeah. What I want to listen to. So I might ask questions that come to you. That was a what council yeah. one mom with you is uh, one of his relatives. Yes, I think it was his nephew or his cousin or something. Yeah, he ran. Yeah. Okay. So uh, again, if there's interest in and people believe that it's you know it's necessary to do it, we'll certainly uh, organize another one. Well, I think it might be beneficial, especially when there's an increase of break-ins. I live in that area my mother's off of Wicked Street. Just to, rem you know, like she said, a flyer to remind you that an increase of break-ins, please make sure windows and doors are locked. Because it's nice out. You open a window and I have a fire escape. You said one of the men they found in the fire escape. So I wouldn't think anyone's climbing it uh, up to the fourth floor, but, you know, sometimes you forget to just check that things are reinforced. might be beneficial when that happens so many in one month. Thank you. I have five escape children. Um, I think it would be more beneficial. Thank you. The uh, university is sending out an email to all of our campus students to remind them as the weather gets warmer, we anticipate to be more opportunities to try to break in. So yeah. they are sending that out this week as well. I, but I think we should Process send out everybody who lives in North Africa. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I've been here for a long, long time. And for all the years I have been down here, whether it's the advisories that Phyllis put out or Matt has put out, it, it, it never changes each day whether we have one break, no breaks, or ten breaks. Is to target hard in your home. I mean, I'd gladly come down. I have officers who will come into your home, and we'll go through it top to bottom. We'll look at the, the framework. We'll look at the deadbolts. We'll look at the windows. We'll look at the skate case. But it never changes, ever. When you when you leave that house, you should target hard in that, 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 that place. That. But it, it never does change. Now, on the again, on the Wicked Street one, we did make an arrest. There's a possibility he could be tied in to some of these other arrests that were a seven. Um, on average, I mean, we might have, you know, on, on some, some months we might have three, we might have four, but going to these meetings all the time, weekly, Phil reports out all the breaks, Matt reports out all the breaks, uh, David reports out all the information, and we hope it gets to all the residents, but it never changes on how to target hide in your home. I understand that, but I think as a tenant or as a person who lives here, sometimes we forget. So I think a reminder once a yeah, while. Yeah, not on the forefront of your mind. It's not the yeah. right, it's on the forefront. Once a reminder, once a year, know, we'll like put, it in, our, put it in front of my brain to the back of my brain. That's so all. I, I don't think rules. Recently. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a good one. No, you Well, even, I know the city has uh, emails you sign up for, or alerts in that way. I mean, that would be beneficial. They tell me when there's street cleaning, you know what I mean? I get a flyer to say, use black trash bags. So when there's increase in something, just to remind yourself, you know, it's always helpful just to remember, okay, you know, you do things so habitual that sometimes it slips your mind that when you forget yeah. to throw a lock on it. You know what I mean? But yeah. you know, if you get a fire escape, you know, you know to be careful with those. I know, I, yeah, you keep that window closed, but like I said, closed. after, a, you know, it get, you get so habitual doing stuff, I mean, don't you ever, you, did, I, did I lock that top lock? Did it, because it's just so everything that you do. So if you, if, if we were to get an alert, that it's been increased that month or within the past three months, at least you'll take the time, like you'll be on the forefront of your mind to check things before you go, even more than you already do. Is there something that the police department already has that they, similar to this, that they hand out maybe in other higher crime areas that maybe you could go around the north end and maybe not necessarily do it door, I know it's a lot, but maybe use some principal points of interest in the north end, post office, CVS, et cetera, et cetera, where like, People are on their way in or out of a certain establishment. Oh, thanks. Okay, I can grab a flyer. Oh, I didn't know there was a flyer. Or make some put it in the shopping bag. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, we could we certainly find a location to leave some more bodies out. Uh, we don't usually, I tell you, we, we fly, every, it's very rare that we fly a neighborhood. And that's only if we if we do with this been a cell homicide or something, we're looking for witnesses, and that's when we'll go and put a flyer on every single person's door. But that's, you know, it's not what we usually do. The other thing we found when we start sending emails, we start scaring everybody. And everybody said, what happened? What happened? Good this year, things. we had the guy in custody. This guy was arrested in South Boston. Well, I know he did it. I know he did it. We had to, he's got the property from the homes, so he's under arrest. He's a B and E guy, but he's been arrested, so it's not like a neighborhood. No, the way I look at it, I wouldn't alarm the neighborhood. The other break-in was a guy. That's a drunk going in there with the fire extinguisher. That's more of a vandalism, although it's carried as a break-in. The college kids, they left the, you know, they even they admitted they, they believe that they left the door unlocked. So that's, you know, we live in the city. We got to take some basic precautions, or someone will go in and steal yourself. This individual who just arrested for the Wheeling Street break-ins, was he ever arrested for break-ins in the neighborhood before? He's been arrested for break-ins in the past, but I don't know if they were specific to the uh, to, to the market. Do you find that in some of the people that you arrest for break-ins in the community that they're from the community break-in? Yes, yes. We've had a lot. We've had this. Truthfully, it's usually that way. It's not someone from South Carolina. It's usually somebody from the neighborhood. Yeah, the, and the person that's been arrested is given a homeless address. He's been arrested numerous times in various locations throughout the state. And the address, you know, that some of the property happened to be a Mass Ave address. So, um, one of the last booking, one of the last addresses that happened to be a homeless address. So, um, do you feel that this is a drug-related issue? Guy Brandon was a girl from South to come here was. Yeah, I, I don't. I, you know, I'm just yeah, I'm going know. on the Wicked Street one random snap and grab. Yeah, I, I, would, that, I would guess that the individual is looking is drug addicted. Yes. And a fraud in the neighborhood procured drugs. Do you think in that area there's someone selling drugs? I'm, I'm finding needles on the street like this. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if they're right, right in that area. I don't haven't had a recent well, drug. You look cool for a well, that we get stolen. Yeah. There seems to be a lot of the stuff. Yeah, I, they have certainly been in the past. Going on. They I, have been in the past drug complaints in the Cooper's, you know, in the area, shall we say. Yeah. I don't give out the exact addresses. Can I ask you? Um, yes. Did he? How did he break in? Because um, you said five, seven, and eleven. Is that what you said? Five, seven, and seven, 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 seven. Okay, behind yeah. is Wicked Street and Salem Street, and there's a, a, a path, not a pathway, but I have a ledge that goes all the way back behind them buildings. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, did he get into that part? Because all them buildings. One came, connect. Okay, the, I heard he went into Bartlett. Yeah, that's right. Huh? I heard he went into Bartlett because of the back entrance. Because she her entrance is from Wicked Street, goes all the way from Bartlett. So the window was open or something, and she went into from Bartlett. The husband was home, she was downstairs, the dog didn't move, and then went out the window. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know so much. It says the rear window. I, mean, I don't know. If it doesn't, you have more detail than the police. <laughs> <laughs> I have a picture of a needle that I picked up on front of. Um, Across the street from the library, I don't feel like I don't have a picture here. If you want to see it, but I did uh, take a picture where it was about four days ago. Too bad to away from the barrel, but well, I know I've been not getting stuff like that. But um, there's a little I, I, I talked to the sweepers around here, the North End, and then asked them, you know, if you've seen a lot, they've seen some. So, I mean, so I'm sure a lot of people have seen them, but like, it's very dangerous and it needs to be cleaned up. We know every every neighborhood has a drug problem. Yeah, I don't. You know, again, every yeah, neighborhood has, one. unfortunately, has a drug problem. And we have drug users and dealers that we've arrested and stuff. No, I don't know that. I just want to say, I mean, he mentioned that. But if there's a, if there's an address, you can tell me offline or at a public meeting. But if you have a, an area of concern, or you think there might be something going on, please let me know. The drug unit, our drug unit A1, we have our own drug unit. It's very active. And if they have information, believe me, they'll, they'll follow it up. I think this is um, definitely a time of concern for, especially our older gener generation who, you know, will leave their windows open, especially when they have fire escapes, and they're starting to plan 
you know, the vegetables and leave them on their fire escape, and leave their clothes on their fire escape to dry. Um, and they're innocent to what's going on out there. They go out and they do their shopping during the day and they leave their windows open. So I think they, we have to definitely get the message out to them um, as to what is going on somehow, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely here as a, as a longtime resident, but, you know, I also do work for the um, City of Boston Elderly Commission. Um, and we, and we do all preach to the elderly. Um, so I'm definitely going to bring this information back to my commissioner and see how we can get the message out without, um, you know, trying to scare them. Because I think this is an area of concern because we do have our seniors in the neighborhood who are not aware of what's going on and are set in their ways and do a lot of their gardening on their fire escapes. And this is a, a way for people to get into their homes. Okay. And come home and be surprised. Well, we, we, tell you, we have an elderly officer, a right. uh, senior response officer, Bobby Luongo, mm -hmm. who's a neighborhood guy. And Bobby does the presentations for us at the elderly buildings. Mm -hmm. So certainly if you have an address identified, let us know. We'll have Bobby down there. And he gives a generic safety talk without alarming or frightening the, the elderly folks. And again, like you said, give them a little reminder mm -hmm. that uh, times have changed, and we've really got to be a little more careful sometimes, because you're right. We don't think that someone will go up and climb up there and go right in their house through their open window and steal something, but we really would. Yeah, the, one of the things we don't have the advantage of, we don't have the advantage of all the elderly people who do not live in elderly houses. Right, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's, that's, the, actual, that's the actual group that's talking about. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, you know, through the period of time, now this is a gentleman identified from outside of the town, but there are other times when we have people who are from the town that are very familiar with the town, blend in completely with the town, and they kind of know the ins and outs. And this has been going on for years, where they know about the open windows and the doors, and for many, many years, it's, again, it's target hardening the home. I don't know if you have any <coughs> elderly apartments, if it's possible to email blast, or you can get that list to us. We'd be more than happy to do some outreach, but... Uh, you know, again, it, it, it never changes whether you live here or you live out in the bayou somewhere. You, you have to tag a hide in your home 24-7. There's, there's really no exception. The only exception is when you're home and you're awake. If it's at night on, um, I think it was seven wicket was through the window, five wicket, a guy, he woke up and he saw the guy at the window and the guy took off. So again, two open windows. Um, and those are the things, you know, you you know, you, you have to watch out for, especially when you live in multiple dwellings, so if you have that, you know, that boy. Yeah, but they look, they look for the open window, they look for the easiest place to get into. So any, any target hardening tips that, you know, we're glad to give out, like we said, Tommy's good office, our community service office, we'll go and visit and do a home inspection if, if anyone wants it. We average, we usually average two or three in the North End, not every month, but that's sort of the average for the, you know, across the months for the entire year. I'll give one quick example. Up at Beacon Hill, we had 17 breaks one year. The guy turned out from Somerville, and they actually sat down with the detectives, and he said, I blended in like I lived up here. Some days I wore a suit and tie, and what I do is I get into some of these apartment buildings, you know, whether he piggybacked in or he used a card, but he got through the four-year door, and he just tried door locks. And then he'd take out a screwdriver and just jimmy the door. And we put in a lot of overtime with anti-crime cars and detectives. We had walking beats all over the place. That's not how we caught him. We caught him on one street where there's an elderly guy, believe it or not, on the fourth floor, heard some noise on the third floor, and he said to the guy, hey, what are you doing? And the guy didn't react in time. He saw the screwdriver, and the old timer, believe it or not, went down the stairs, tried to chase him. He went out into the street. He saw a detailed cop down the street, and he yelled, get that guy. He was trying to break into the apartment. That's how we got the guy. And then the guy confessed. I don't know why, but he did. He confessed to all the breaks. And so what it is is if you can get into some of these buildings, and what happened was it worked out where it said, someone said, hey, can I help you? And it said, oh, I'm looking for Charlie Smith. Oh, Charlie Smith, oh, okay, Charlie doesn't live here. And then they'd go back to the apartment and go to the next floor. And he just tried to give the gift the gap. Mm -hmm. But if he thought that there was nobody behind that door, he took a shot at that door. And that happens a lot, too. So again, if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't look right, we always say call 911. Um, so it's that gut instinct, too. I just want to say, I, I agree with her point that because uh, I signed up for the no tow emails, and they're very effective. Like when, when, the, uh, when the time comes when the, the winter break is over, then you get this email from them saying, hey, watch out because next week we're going to start towing. 
and it, 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 it helps you remember, you know, so maybe you could even just piggyback on that list and sort it by neighborhood, and, I mean, if you needed to, I'm not, I, I take your point too, that you don't want to alarm people. No, you know, it's, it, it's, I don't know if we usually have done that, uh, I don't think we, but, yeah, I think we'd have to get it, we don't have that, that list, by, by yeah, a separate list. So yeah, yeah. We'd have to create a similar one to help us create a neighborhood contact list for the police. We'd be glad to do it. But, but I, I just meant like if there was some uh, sudden cluster of crimes, like this Wigan Street thing or something like that, it might be worth emailing all the people on the list that live in the North End and say, yeah, please have an eye because. You yeah, know, yeah no, I tell you, when I was in, well, <coughs> date myself, but when I was a captain in Dorchester, we, we did that. Through one of the neighborhood groups had asked us, and put, they put together a list for us. Yeah. And we would send them the information, and they had a good system of blasting out. They used to send the regular neighborhood notices, but they'd say, hey, Savin Hill area, is where we did it. Savin Hill area, there's been three robberies. And they would put that out to folks, especially if we had like a description of someone. So the, there's something that's done, but it's usually the neighborhood would say, here's our list. Could you guys hit this? You know, then we should send the emails for the safety meetings so people can send yeah. it to it. Yeah, that's a good. Idea. But I, I, I just, I'm sorry, but I had another question on a different topic. Should I say the phrase about vandalism? No, you can go now. Okay, because we can handle any question. I'm wondering why, why isn't vandalism listed on these things as a crime? These are, the front sheet lists part one crimes as the FBI defines them, and vandalism is a part two crime. But we do track all of our vandalism that we have. All of the animals that we the reason I'm asking is because we have vandalized, of course. <laughs> the, 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 the first Friday, the Friday of the proper St. Patrick's Day weekend, somebody knocked the window off, or the mirror off our car. So since then, I've been very aware of, but is you know, the potential for vandalism. Yeah. And one of the things I've noticed is that there's a lot of pollen in the air now. It's starting to be springtime. So. Some day, some mornings, it really leaves. I got a black car, and it leaves a lot of traces. Yes. And I, the last two days, I can see where there's somebody been going around and trying the, the doors on my car yeah. at night, uh, not on the sidewalk side, but on the street side. And I'm just wondering, like, maybe these people are like walking down the street and just trying all that. Sure yeah, yeah, I'm sure they, yeah. They should, I'm sure they are. Yeah. That's yeah. where we used to go. Don't leave change in your car. Don't leave anything obvious in your car. No, that's right. I, I do all that and I lock it up and everything, but I'm just yeah. saying this van, this experience of being, having vandalism made me sort of change the way I think about it, you know. But you made a police report? Yes, I did make a police report, actually. Did you have it? Yeah. Was it a car parked on Chatter or Hanover? Uh, no, the car was parked on commercial. Oh, oh, no. 454, something like that. 474, 424, something like that. I didn't bring the. Please support with me, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. No morning. It was on a Saturday morning. We found it. I'm sure we have the if you made a police report, I'm sure we have the police report. We usually don't bring the vandalism, like I said, all of the vandalism reports. But what, might that not be useful for the for the neighborhood? Yeah, I mean, I'm just wondering, is it like how big a problem? Yeah, if he's a patent, you know. We had one vandalism in 269 on March 23rd, and that's the only vandalism I can, okay. Teddy sends, Teddy Boyle yeah. sends me all the vandalism reports yeah, we can, once a week. And I yeah. On, yeah. Uh, we can bring them up. We yeah. usually yeah. only bring those reports if there's been a, a few of them. We didn't have that many. No, no. Again, you know, if we have Matt doing his piece, we have it. Um, you know, we have three media outlets here, and we, yeah, we, yeah. we report out every yeah. single week. No, that, that's fine. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not complaining. Yeah. And Matt gets all of our stuff. Yeah. It is yeah. all sent out. Well, every week, Teddy gives me the list of every address. I mean, the, the ones, the Commercial Street, right in that area, yeah. is almost on there once and a week. Matt, you yeah. actually give out the our constituency. I think I get an email every day. Yeah. And I'm, anything you want to email out, I'm happy to email. all the stuff that we put out every day. Yeah. Um, so you know we have we just launched the Facebook we launched launched the Twitter we just just started that we have District C District A one CSO yeah. check us out on Facebook we have right. PPD news dot com it? so I mean there's many many means what to District A one CSO, CSO. Right. District A one CSO on Facebook we just started that. I'm sorry. 
Sweet you look humiliated for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> District A1 CSO. Go on Facebook. CSO. Go all over it. Hit the like button. Oh, you can like us. Hit the like button. You can hit like. You like when you hit like. If you don't like it, you can hit like it. You can give me a thumbs down. You can give me a thumbs down. Oh, I better. So, what is this? Our our district is the first district in the Boston Police Department to have its own Facebook page. So we were asked by our young people. I, I'll tell you, what, for the young people, they watch us on Matt's, they, they go on Matt's thing and watch us on the computer. That's why I, I don't mind having us on, because folks watch the meeting. And when, I see, when we see young people, they always say, hey, we saw you on the meeting. Uh, yeah. You know, so people like to watch us on the thing. But young people like Facebook and, and doing it. So we were doing a bunch of community events and taking all these photos. And I said, you know what, we should just put them on Facebook so people see them. We had all these youth events with these teenagers, and they all like Facebook and looking at Facebook. They don't like to come to community meetings, so we have young people here. We're glad to have them. Mostly they look at Facebook, so why don't we do that? So that's what we started doing. We're, putting, we're going to start putting more information up. We just started doing this. But if you go on Facebook, you can check us out uh, and some of the community stuff we're doing. That, that and we'll add name. more things. By what name? District A1 CSO. District A1 CSO. Can I answer you? We'll talk about probably the police pal association I have every year that sponsor 48 North End families. The 48 North End people that go on a ski trip at a very miserable price. just did it on a so you had 48 North residents who were sponsored by the police. Well, amongst other things, bowling and things they do. So this did one also work with getting involved with the community as well, just so you know that. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, I, I just wanted to follow up on that um, with the sweet incident. Uh, what really struck me when that occurred was there was no one, no one that came out. I mean, this guy was, I mean, there was, it, it wasn't like a brawl, it was, but there was no one. I mean, there was, when my husband went out there, my husband screamed at these guys, nobody responded. So, I mean, and I, and I understand that. That's just the transition of the neighborhood. You know, it's not... This is the kid that could beat up? This is yeah. Well, we, we had a woman about three or four months ago, mm -hmm. I'd say maybe even five or six months ago, I believe it was on Salem Street, and we talked, the guy got out of the car, got into a confrontation, the woman got beat up, he made an arrest from Charlestown. There was a little bit more to the story than that. But what I'm just saying, to be specific, to calm everyone here, not to calm them that there's not two guys still out there in the band, but I, we haven't reported out anything in months about anyone that I could think of on a midnight shift that was badly beaten randomly with two guys pulled up on a car. I just want people to know that. I don't want to think that's happening like every month. Somebody no, walks no. out of the no, house. No, I think but your, my point, point, my, your point, point was point that people is, don't get involved yeah. like they used to. That's my yeah. point. Yeah. I, I, and, and, and I, I agree with you. People and, are afraid to get involved. And you know, I understand what we call 911. Yeah. They don't but, have to go out in the street. They can call 911. Right. right. Yeah, at least if you if you call, I mean, that's, you certainly get something by calling. But my point is that I think Probably, if you can reach out to the young people that are in the neighborhood to let them know about the house breaks, and uh, that may be a more effective way because I think that the elderly are pretty wise. I mean, I think yeah. they know they've been here; they know how to handle themselves. I, I think it's the young people. If you can, if you can advance on that Facebook, I think that probably would be an effective way to get out to the, the residents that are here now. Because they're every, everybody's electronic now. No, they are. They're all so, electronic now, and we're trying to uh, get a Twitter account going. To also, uh, get that. we got that now too. Well, yeah. I mean, that's Again, we're trying to reach out to the younger folks that we uh, yeah, it's we miss. Well, we, we care about them also. We're trying to get, get, get them. It's a good point. We don't they don't come to traditional meetings. They don't read the newspaper like you know, people. Uh, but they know when they're online. They're online. It's, it's, Social media and electronic media for the very younger generation. Should get back to the elderly thing. This is probably a list where they see me on wheels. 
20 year olds are using needles. You can't just say 30 year old. Yeah, but I'm just going off of what's usually arrested. These are hardcore drug units that users are in their 30s. I know anybody could be using it. Yeah, the ones that are getting caught. Yeah, the ones that are getting With the needle exchange program, you would, the, the, the part of that system was to bring up 20 spend needles that give you 20 right. needles. You can go to a CVS now and you can buy needles. The big One of the biggest issues we have is in the fast food restaurants and the Dunkin' Donuts and the Burger Kings, they're finding the hypos in there. So we, we try and do a lot of policing around that. We set up a lot of drug investigations. Maybe I'm the guy who can't do it in the house. Maybe I live at home with my mother. Maybe she's trying it in the garbage. I gotta get out of the house. I gotta go do my thing. I gotta get my purchase of drugs. If I can't get into these bathrooms, I might try and do it down on the park where I'm gonna do it in the back alley. You know, for the 11 neighborhoods that we cover, for the, you know, we're, we're finding the back alleys, the doorsteps, the parks, the libraries, when I go up and down that Tremont Street corridor in the downtown area, that's what they're telling me. They're saying, hey, they're shooting up in the bathroom. The new Panera Bread up on, uh, that's their, the latest thing they have going on now. You know, that new Panera Bread, we, you try to balance, you can give money if you have money, you know, mm -hmm. then the homeless issue and stuff. Lo well, and behold, all of a sudden, we're finding needles in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So, again, if I'm Tom the drug addict, the, the, is it a safer thing to be in a bathroom to do it, do it in a public, public area? If I'm, you know, for the 6,800 homeless pe people that are out there, they, they're not going to do it in the shelter, they're not going to get by. But just that person that lives at home, they're not going to do it at home, they're going to do it elsewhere. So we have a big issue, but most importantly, if you do find the, the needles, you can call 911 between EMS, the fire department, and the Boston Police. We have canisters, we've got the rubber gloves. You know, I wouldn't put the burden on anyone in here if you don't feel comfortable picking up a needle. You can call us, we'll come down and grab the needle. Yeah. Let's go see if they're on packs, though. Too. We want to give us a call. We, we want to know, know if we track it. It's in the street, and I picked it yeah. up. Yeah. Find that and picked it up and put it in the yard. You know, the, the, the downtown Boston uh, business improvement, I get an email once a week from Steve Brooks, and he gives me updates as to where they're finding the needle. You know, with, I, I'm taking note of it. I got a little file system going on it, but I haven't seen anything apparent where you say it's handled in place. They're finding them every single Thursday. Yeah. Well, if I knew it was every Thursday, then I'd have the drug unit or the anti-crime unit. I'd have a couple of roving patrols up there. If it's just a random one needle we found on 330 Washington Street, that's not giving me a lot, but I'm putting it into the database. So if you call the 911, you know, that's something we can track, you know, that I'd be paying attention to. If you went for the man's 24 hour hotline, you find the needles, you know, we get that information. Well, if you want to come into the street, then you could, because I have a copy of it right here. That's fine. Any loud parties this past month? Loud parties. You go to any? I'm too old. I'm too old. We had a few of them. Yeah, a lot of them. 214 Hanover Street, uh, there was a loud party in the middle of the month after St. Patrick's Day. Um, it ended with a fist fight. Officers arrived with some vandalism on the property. Um, we identified the tenants and um, proceeded as we're supposed to. And then there was an incident on 74 Salem Street, which was not a loud party, but it appeared to be uh, vandalism. Um, the officers took down a report, and we, um, I forwarded that report to the industry affairs. Other than that, though, it's actually been very quiet. And the St. Patrick's Day weekend was remarkably quiet. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, they have to put out a lot of extra patrols. So the people yeah. went on that ski trip might be the big problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was told, though, just so to know, I live at 137 in the car, and I wasn't home that week, and I was down on my cruise. But um, people go on my roof constantly. We own the building, and 145 in the car is a menace, I feel. That those kids were, I was told, were on my roof. Um, I wasn't home, so I was, if I was home, I would have on my roof, and I would have told them to get the hell off. But, I would have. <laughs> my boyfriend was walking in the car for four stories. So I always complain about 145 engine cars because they're a mess. First floor is fine, the rest is fine. <laughs> that's right, that's right. First floor is fine. Anybody can be on there, you know, deal with it, you want. Okay. Yeah, we've had 145 before. Yeah, I call about it all the time. Yeah, I'm a little cost. All the time. Are they no, I don't own 145, I own 137. When you have them at 137 on your roof, are you calling the police? Of course. 
Well, I wasn't here. I wasn't here. Stay And my in 135, you called my boyfriend up and said, you know, the people are on your roof, and he wasn't gonna walk up there. He can't walk up to five flights. And then she called back and said, "Here's Gina. Gina will go up there." And I, I Gina was not proof. So I came home. I just talked to Lynn like, you know, Lynn like at 135. And said, Thank you for calling. But I told 145 today, stay off my effing roof. It's no language. But I, I, I don't. Do you know what happened up there? They're gonna get hurt. Do you know what's happening? They're coming out of 145. I don't know the whole building except for, except for her aunt. Who was well, my aunt's 91. Well. She lives there. Hello, well, aunt. Do you hear noise? No. She has. 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 She Oh, yeah. That was the, yeah. Three kids from Williamsburg. Yeah, we had, we had the arrest, we had the arrest for vandalism there. That's right, that's why I know it's worth yeah. working, right? Yeah, I, it's a, I guess. Yeah, we go by there all the time. I know, I know, because yeah. I always call, it is all I, I call you all the time. Yeah. The trash, this is not a trash thing, but the trash, I oh, always get the ticket, I'm tired of it. Is that an absentee landlord? Or? Yeah, I don't, I think a real estate owns it, or I don't know if it's an absentee landlord. I don't know who owns it. It's right? But they absentee. Yeah. John and Mary. John and Mary. John and John and Mary. 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 Oh, I would love to do that. Uh, I know that at, uh, when we first started, well, the patrols, the areas where they're coming into the yes, yes. at night. Well, the Richmond Street entrance into the Mount is horrendous. My girlfriend lives on the corner. It, uh, she's up every night of the weekend. She cannot sleep. Sounds echo. I can't imagine how the nursing home doesn't call it. We have people sometimes, we have them, they are high, high out of their minds. We treat it as a medical assist usually mm -hmm. if they're not causing a disturbance, but we do get those type of calls. And if you're causing a disturbance, it's a crime, but just being high in itself is it, not the actual charge. So, yeah. I just want to say on the noise question, because uh, that's been a concern of mine, it's in common with many other people in the neighborhood, but uh, I've got a document now describing. Uh, noise and, and acoustic protection. So if there's anybody who wants to, um, uh, I'd, I'd be happy to talk with or share this document with anybody who is having a noise problem and wants to know what they can do about it in their, in their apartment. Because I've been concentrating on windows, the, the acoustic insulating properties of windows and walls. So like a target hopping for noise? Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly, yeah. that's exactly it. That's why I brought it up here, because yeah. it's, it's basically the same thing. The noise maker. I've got a buddy who's got like a little flying saucer and just grinds like the ocean. Well, I actually have no, no. It's not, it's not, I have actually thought of sound cannons and stuff like that to take aggressive action against the people who are making the noise. But no, this is all this is all passive stuff. But passive stuff. Yeah. yeah. I do have an announcement to make. Now, last year, St. Patty's Day, 
I was really nervous. I've never been nervous to come into an Atan meeting. This was the first meeting I was really nervous about because I really thought this place would be overwhelmed, packed with hundreds of people saying how bad the St. Paddy's Day weekend was. And obviously it wasn't that bad. No, we get, we, get, we get many compliments. I have to say yeah. that, uh, you know, we have many compliments. Uh, not that I'm yeah. too, but we had four, we had to set up a four late night dog party calls for all of the 16th and the 17th. Saturday to Sunday. Yeah, that was here. It wasn't that bad. We had four calls after that, after midnight. So, it, you know, again, it was on a Sunday. There were a lot of different factors. I didn't apply the additional controls for Captain. But it wasn't as warm. And again, last year we had the Bruins, we had hockey East, yeah, yeah, yeah. St. Paddy's, and I think, and I think people do get the message because if you remember from St. Paddy's Day as last year through, we averaged about 60 to 80 people at every meeting yeah. wanting to know sure, what yeah. was going to change, yeah. and whether it's between the community, the newspapers, the media outlets, which I truly believe in make a big, big difference because I think people read that stuff. And the additional patrols this St. Patrick's Day weekend was relatively quiet for the But there was, you, there was, a, there was a, an event at the Boston Garden. It was a hockey <laughs> event. And there was a large group of kids from Malton Catholic, I'll say the school that they came from, and they all started coming down the North End thinking that this was going to be where they were going to be a little party. Mm -hmm. And that was put a stop to with myself, four officers, and a police wagon. Oh, yes, so, I heard that on Sunday afternoon. Yes. So, just That's so you know, the guys were out there and doing, doing yeah. their, their job. Yeah, well, your guys were all over the place that weekend. I thought it was terrific. You go uh, every every couple of blocks, there'd be guys in yellow, uh, yellow, trap, yeah, yellow yeah. Uh, jackets. And, and they'd, be, they'd make it their business to just talk to people. Yeah. I think that made a big difference. And again, you know, it's something where we had to uh, expend overtime money that we you know usually don't in this area. But I made the case that we have to spend some money because of the we're yeah, seeing a big change with, with people looking to come here to party on St. Patrick's Day, which you wouldn't think that they would be going to North End, but we know now they are. That's why that's why the restaurants that stay open late should pitch in and have mm -hmm. the cop detail because that's just an example yeah, of what you stopped all the people from coming in. Yeah. I know, but that's just an example. I think she means yeah, yeah. in general. In yeah. general that, you know, if you can do that in, because of your presence and stopping people, just imagine if there was a few details on the end of the street of Seattle or even down near Richmond Street on a Friday or Saturday night. Well, we've promoted that for the last few meetings. I, I, but what, I haven't heard anything about well, again, it. Again, the process is that it's to get together with them and to, to get that going and to see if they'll jump aboard and then decide that so they want to So we need to have that. a meeting with the restaurant yeah. commerce. They're trying to get the restaurant to do it both. Yes. 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 That's what they're trying to do. Yes. 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 We suggested that for a while now. Yeah. yeah. Could I just say that the, the city can't order the restaurants to do anything? I know, but they, I just but wish there was a way can. that we can, yes. we can like yeah. force the issue. Yes. You yes. know, yeah. like do, do the so residents have to get together and yes. force the issue? So how do we do that? How yeah, do we yeah, force again, the you issue? You can start a signature drive, uh, whether it's through the public safety each week. We get new people that show up. You put signatures down. Again, you, you, you talk to your city councilors, the local reps, from his liaison. You know, and, you know, this is what we'd like to see. Uh, letters from the different committees, mm -hmm. many different groups in the North End. Yeah. Um, they should get together. What's, and then reaching the, out to the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, what's the one that's open before the morning? I'm sorry. Okay. 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 Okay.
Because that's also, when I that's when I decide to go home because how oh, yeah. crazy yeah. they're acting. I go home. Yeah. Very good. Because they get insane. It's the people in the lines. And you shouldn't but the thing is, if, if it's you know, my choice as a person to stay out with some friends, we're having fun, whatever we're doing. But and we want to go in and pop, hey, there's no need for me to have to be in line with people being rowdy and sure. jumping everywhere. And how many not think kids say, oh, five? No. Oh, no, 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 years ago. I was saying years ago. It's the people, <laughs> but I'm saying, it's the people in the lines, it's the people that come in. Yeah. They come in from the clubs. Yeah. So, I'm well, curious about that how they are certain situation um, that they keep calling from the Springs building. There's a helicopter that boards down at 620 to 630 in Toronto, and they're complaining about her. I'm just curious. They don't know where it is. Uh, why I thought we had uh, somebody addressed that. Oh, yeah, we all addressed that. Yeah, and the shooting area is where the upgrade almost holds anyone to find. They don't even use the original. So they were wondering why. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's gonna be for the. I mean, the only way you can get it is you the FAA issue to somebody or try to get it to them. Yeah, there's a feeling like I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I,